this evening we are coming to you from Cairo, Egypt, and we are both attending the Egyptian Society of Pediatric Allergy and Immunology. And with me is the president of the World Allergy Organization, Dr. Mario Sanchez Borges, and he comes to us from the Central University of Venezuela, Caracas, Venezuela. And I have a question for him. He delivered an excellent lecture today on dust mite allergy and some unique features of dust mite allergy. So tell us, what is the most interesting way that you have seen dust mite allergy present in patients? Well, as you know, uh, mite allergy has been uh, responsible for uh, allergic respiratory diseases such as rhinitis and asthma, which are highly prevalent in the world. Also, there is some demonstration that contact with the mite allergens in the skin could uh, trigger atopic dermatitis. But we didn't know what happens when you eat mite. Mice frequently contaminate with flour, and uh, when allergic people take foods prepared with this contaminated flour, especially pancakes, they develop immediately severe symptoms of allergy, anaphylactic reactions induced by the ingestion of uh, mite contaminated foods. This is called oral mite anaphylaxis and has been also designated as pancake syndrome. And tell me, how would a patient who um, is eating maybe pancakes or is eating uh, uh, pastry goods, what would they, how would they know that they have this uh, dust mite allergy? Well, uh, symptoms appear immediately after eating this kind of foods contaminated and people have to go to emergency room because they have breathlessness, they have uh, facial angioedema, they have uh, other symptoms, but mostly it's a medical emergency. And then in the emergency room, if the doctors are sufficiently trained, they will give treatment for the uh, emergency, but they should refer the patient to the allergist to do a special test to determine, for example, mite sensitization by means of skin tests or uh, in vitro tests with the uh, serum. And also it's important to identify the mites in the flower, which is very easy, easily done because you can take the flower and put under the microscope and since the, the mites are alive and they are moving constantly in the field, you will see them very easily. So you can identify the mite, you can prepare an extract to make skin test with the with the mite contaminated flower and if it, these people will react to the contaminated flower and to the mite allergens, but not to uncontaminated flower. That's a very, very interesting syndrome. Um, what would be your take home message for allergists in primary care? What should they do to help diagnose this condition? Well, uh, the important thing is to be aware of this disease, which is a kind of nature's experiment. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if they know that there is the possibility that this kind of food contaminated with mites as hidden allergens are, is, is, is possible, taking a good medical history and suspecting that would be enough to consider this diagnosis. Of course, they have to discard that there is nothing else. For example, there is no wheat allergy because this is an old possibility. But if you see the mites and you do the skin test and patient does not react to wheat flour or to wheat commercial strand, but they react to the contaminated uh, flour and also to mite strands, it will be very highly uh, probability of, of this. What would the allergist likely say to the patient who's concerned? It's been diagnosed, but they want to know how do I prevent it in the future and what happens what do I do if I get another reaction as serious as the last? If, if you put the flour into the refrigerator, the regular one, not, not in the freezer, but in the regular refrigerator, it's forced 
four degrees, four centigrade degrees, and keep those especially in uh, sealed containers. Uh, mice will not die. They will probably do a pruning stage, which is a silent stage, but they will not grow. So you prevent mite growth, and probably you can use that flower without any problem. And should the patient carry epinephrine with them in the event that they well, have this? Yes, I think so, because uh, many of these patients have high risk of developing again the reaction. So it, it would be, I recommend all of the patients with these symptoms to, to have with them to carry epinephrine out of it. And with that, we are going to close for the evening, and we thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Borges, and we'll talk with you again later when we have more research on dust mite anaphylaxis.